Good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank um, all the attendees out there for uh, joining the call. Um, I'm, it's a pleasure for me to present today to you. Um, this presentation I've done a, a number of times in the past, and it's one that I like to keep at a fairly high level um, and try not to get too bogged down into to the details. But I do encourage you when we get to more of the question and answer uh, portion of the of the presentation, please feel free to fire away any questions uh, you you would like answers on, or if there's other things um, that we can get information on for you. Um, in the following days, I'm more than happy to do that. So with that being said, I will get started here. So <clears throat> what we're going to cover today is uh, the, the really the first slide is uh, going to cover CPWE. And for those of you that don't understand, know what that acronym is, that uh, stands for the Converged Plant-Wide Ethernet, um, um, basically plant-wide Ethernet layout. And it talks about kind of the points of some of the best practices you find on the plant floor all the way up to the uh, enterprise level um, within the factory. We'll touch base on some standards, uh, specifically my standards from the TIA uh, 1005 um, uh, standards, and uh, then we'll, we'll dive down further really into the product level and, and what you find typically um, on the plant floor um, from a copper and also um, fiber optic um, standard. So when you're looking at the, the CWE um, reference architecture, um, looking at the at the top level, which we refer to as level four and five at the enterprise zone level, um, that's where you find obviously your 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 um, um, pre-configured um, integrated solutions for your switches, your servers, um, your your main distribution frame cabinets and that type of thing. And then dropping through the through the I, IDMZ, the demilitarized zone, then down to what we call the upper level of the plant. Um, and, and this is where you might find uh, your structured cabling that would be maybe at the plant ceiling level. And then from there, um, down to the cell level or the zone level, level zero through one, which is where we're going to focus today. And, and that's your harsh environment connectivity on the plant floor, on machine, um, from cabinet to machine or machine to machine, that type of thing. So here's a, just a kind of a closer look at the at the at the star tarpo, topology uh, of that plant floor and and again the area we're going to focus on is that box to the right that talks about the the levels one, zero through two and and this is where you're going to find your your twisted pair of copper cabling on the plant floor um, occasionally you're going to find fiber patch ca uh, patch cables depending on um, EMC or EMI requirements on the plant floor or concerns and as well as your M12 um, cord sets and connectors, um, as well as M8 and 7.8 style um, connectors and cord sets, the stuff that's on the machine, on sensor, on IO block, um, that type of thing. So MICE ratings, this is, uh, this is and as I mentioned a, a minute ago, this is derived from the TIA 1005 standards. And basically, um, MICE describes the real world environment, okay? Use this diagram, you know, in, in the future as a reference to describe the four areas, you know, of the MICE evaluation, which is M for mechanical, I for ingress, C for climatic and chemical, and then E for your EMI or your electromatic um, areas that you're gonna run into the plant floor. So it, MICE is used to rate the environment, not the product, and that's a real important thing to, to, to understand. The result of the MICE evaluation is used as a benchmark to compare product specifications to. So each product used in the system should be at least equal to or exceed the MICE evaluation for that space. So in other words, if you look at this diagram, you see everything to the left is yellow. That's your carpeted area, your office, and then it moves to red concrete out on the plant floor. So the point of that last sentence that I stated is you certainly don't want to use an IP20 patch cord, RG45 patch cord that would be suitable for your office environment. You certainly don't want to use it, let's say in a an I3 area, something on the plant floor that might get wet, that type of thing. Pretty common sense stuff. Okay. 
Okay, we are going to take a few moments now and take our first poll question. So how many of you have worked with, uh, with, with mice ratings in the past or currently are? Looks like they are responding now. We'll just give a couple more moments. Okay, Mark, it looks like the voting has completed, and I'll go ahead and hand it back over to you. Okay. And I am not seeing any of the questions. Yeah, you will not see them on your side. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so IP ratings. Um, I bring this up. Um, it's just, again, general rule of thumb, um, typically on the plant floor, you're going to run into three IP ratings for the most part. One is your IP20, um, again, which is your patch cord type stuff. It's going to be in cabinet. It's not going to be on the machine, or at least it shouldn't be on the machine. That, that would not be best practices by any means. The most common IP rating is your IP67 rating, um, which is your, your dust tight and protection against immersion in water for a meter for up to 30 minutes. It's a very common IP rating. It's typically carried on all of your M12, M8, and 7.8s type uh, patch cords and, and, um, and connectors. Um, the other one you'll find is the IP69K um, rating, which is really used heavily in food and beverage um, market where wash down and high temp, uh, high pressure wash is used. In terms of cable ratings or cable jackets um, for the industrial market, PVC, TPE, and PUR are your most commonly found and commonly used. From a cost perspective, PVC still is really the most cost effective. However, its performance is less than that of TPE and PUR, uh, but still is very, very commonly used. TPE is becoming what I consider um, the, the go-to cable jacket. Um, and I say that because the volumes of it being used today is, is in, ever ever increasing and its performance is is second to none in terms of um, all the things I show listed there, oil resistance, your high flex applications, um, your smoke ratings, your abrasion resistance, that type of thing. So PUR, um, not as common, I guess, coming less common. Um, it's more of a standard in Europe today, whereas the TP jacket is becoming more of a standard here, particularly um, in the automotive industry. They they're really have been one of the first to adopt it on a very wide scale, um, on a wide scale business today. So the different types of cabling um, you're going to find um, on the plant floor or above the plant floor, um, one structured cabling, which is your horizontal um, solid conductor um, cable typically that's installed and left in place. So it's either hanging on J hooks or it's in a cable tray or a cable rack of some sort. And uh, it's connected to with, with patch panels or patch cords that drop down to the plant floor from there. And there is where you run into your point to point cabling, which is your stranded cabling, right? Um, your typical, your typical stranded 24 or 26 gauge, um, typically field terminated with plugs or um, you have M12 and again M8 and M uh, S7 8 style over molded cord sets. Then again, all the jacket types available in all three of those um, today. So from an in, from a cable infrastructure standpoint, moving to the plant floor, not necessarily on the plant floor, but these are some of the products you're going to run into at that higher level. Um, you will run into most of your fiber optic cabling there, depending on the the lengths of the runs. You know, if you're over 90 meters or 100 meters, you're going to 
you know, most likely jump into a, a fiber optic uh, cable um, from the enterprise level down um, to that zone enclosure down on the plant floor. And you'll see your industrial, you know, shielded jacks. Typically, you'll see um, very common use of um, patch panels uh, in the zone uh, cabinets and then patch cords, you know, out of there. Uh, again, um, target applications, again, connectivity, and it says within the control panel, yes, that's true, but down to it from, from the ceiling on down. And again, mice, rate, mice level ratings, you're talking one to two when you look at the mice scale. Um, and again, you're running into both IP20 and IP67 scenarios um, in those situations of installation. Key factors you're, you're trying to you're trying to watch for one noise mitigation, um, shielding, uh, grounding and bonding, all important factors. Um, 600 volt cabling now is become very prevalent. Um, and, and again, let's let's touch base on that. 600 volt cabling doesn't mean that that Ethernet cable is rated to to handle 600 volts. What it is rated to do is sit in the cable tray next to uh, motor motor cables or drive cables and is shielded well enough that there typically will not be any noise interference. So again, 300 volt was the, the rated uh, copper cable for, for a long time and the 600 volt now has gained a lot of uh, traction in the market, not only from a CAT 5E standpoint, but now as well as 600 volt, or I'm sorry, CAT 6 and CAT 6A. Um, other things you'll see, again, the DIN rail patching, um, and uh, and your connectors, most of the formats and connectors you're going to see up at that level are, are your RJ45s and your, your LC and SC um, fiber connectors. And then finally dropping down, uh, dropping down onto the plant floor, this is where you're going to see your IP67 rated type equipment, um, your industrial bulkheads, your shielded uh, panel adapters uh, that are M12 to RJ45, which, you know, sit in a panel door in the side of a cabinet that take a, an M12 overmolded cord set that's sitting, coming off a machine and, and brings it into the panel where then you jump in with a with an IP20 patch cord up to your patch panel or whatever it is you're, you're hooking up to. Could be a, an Ethernet switch, what have you. Um, your industrial access data ports. Um, Typically not IP67, usually more IP66 rated, IP65, but they're service ports basically on a cabinet. And then the king of the connectors is what I refer to the M12 on the plant floor. Um, it's it's a good 90% of the connections you're going to see today um, on machine, um, on IO block, that type of thing. Um, some of the factors you're looking um, looking at also at this level um, armored cabling may be required down on the plant floor um, you know are, are there again distance limitations are, are you going to need copper are you going to need fiber depending on the, the layout of the plant or the conveyor whatever it is that uh, whatever machine it is in place that that you're dealing with EMI also you know obviously is always a concern on the plant floor so electrical noise so um, all considerations to look at I throw this picture up there just as a, a representative. Um, this is something you see if you're on the plant floor, you'll see it on a on a on a daily basis, and and that's the 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 um, rows and rows of IO blocks in some cases, as you see in the top right hand picture. But that's real world that's real world environment, or you'll have a single IO block that's shown below. But um, again, this is where most of your connectivity today is on the plant floor. And all that gray cabling you see is running out to some sort of sensor typically on the plant floor, whether it's an inductive prox or a photo eye or a light curtain. It could be many different things out there that, that the IO blocks are, are, are basically pulling connectivity back to the PLC in a single point typically. So some of the common things in terms of um, I throw this up here just as common terms of things you're going to find on the plant floor. Again, your 600 volt cable, your industrial rated CAT 5E and CAT 6 cable, over molded cord sets, um, your field term plugs, panel adapters. Again, your your field terminal uh, plugs in, in DNX code. D, just as a reference, um, D is your CAT 5E um, 
connector. Your X code is the newer guy on the block, and that's your CAT 6A and CAT 7 um, uh, M12 connector. And that's actually an 8-pin where the, the decode is a 4-pin. And, of course, you've got um, a myriad of 600-volt patch cables typically on the plant floor as well in cabinet. So again, the decode, I, I, I throw this up there again because it's, again, the most commonly connection out on the plant floor. They are typically always fully shielded, at least in a metal version. They do come in plastic versions as well that are not shielded. Um, <clears throat> they're available in a, a, a different, a, a several different termination types. Um, one is a screw terminal. Um, the other would be a, your IDC or insulation displacement connector, and the other version would be a crimp connector. Um, typically, the screw connector um, is usually in a plastic form in terms of the body. Not really recommended for high vibration environments because those screws will will back off if you're not using a Loctite on them at some point. Um, your IDC is probably one of the most commonly ones used on the plant floor today, at least in your more harsh environment industrial applications. And then the crimp, um, because it's a little more labor intensive, um, it's typically not used a lot on the plant floor. It's used very heavily um, in the transportation market today on, on buses and in rail applications where high vibration is, is, is an issue. But again, all of these connectors are suited for, for uh, shielded or uh, unshielded uh, twisted pair cable. Um, they uh, typically will all meet IP67 requirements when they're mated to the right, um, um, right um, Newton meter setting. Um, kind of the same message here, which is showing what the uh, what the X code looked like. And if those of you that have never seen the X code, you're looking the picture here with the the blue jacketed cable. Um, you're looking down the barrel of the the X code. You see that there's a, an X shaped shield in there, and that's basically separating the the four pair cable in there to carry shield all the way through the connector. So. The Xcode is relatively new on the market. It's been around um, a handful of years and is slowly gaining traction um, specifically um, in camera or high-speed um, video type camera applications. It hasn't really landed heavily on the plant floor yet um, in other applications as decode has still been suitable from a transmission rate um, uh, for, uh, for Ethernet. Um, but uh, again, just a quick note, the, uh, the X code is a gigabit connector, so um, it, we, will see, we will see more of it uh, as time comes um, for different applications as more data gets um, pushed through those uh, Ethernet cables. Again, um, real quickly, um, more product you're going to find um, in the cabinet on the plant floor, your DIN, your DIN rail amount adapters, your DIN rail patch panels. And then if you've got uh, a bigger um, uh, mounted uh, type uh, cabinets um, on the plant floor, you'll see the modular type patch panels as well. Fiber optic, there's a lot to talk about there. Um, there's a lot of different variations if, if you're familiar with it, but um, again, copper comes in a lot of different flavors um, from indoor to outdoor to outside the plant. Of course, industrial applications, um, patch cord and all the, the OMs and OS um, types, and there's a good three or four different types of connectors. Um, and types of uh, polished kits, um, OptiCam kits, um, field termination tools. There's there's a lot to know about fiber, and um, there's a lot of there's a lot of mistakes that are made with it due to the termination because um, it can be tricky. So um, in a lot of cases, we at Panduit have, we have our our approved um, integrators and installers that are all very well versed in 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 this type of termination and it's usually pretty recommended to to go through at least some level of training before you start delving into the fiber world it's a bit more complicated than uh, than uh, than copper is and again this just talks about the types the typical types of connectors um, you'll find in the market um, obviously there's a lot of manufacturers and we're we're all pretty 
pretty close to being the same in terms of, of what we offer um, and what types of of what types of connectors. But obviously, you've got the LC, the SC, and the ST. The ST, which is your bayonet style, and then you've got the push pull, and then the snap, which is really the more the common commonly used connector um, in in fiber optic today. So backbone cabling um, for fiber. Um, there's really a couple of main types. One is your armor interlocking cable, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, from an industry standpoint, your typical fiber counts out there are anywhere from six to up to 144. Again, you can get this type of cable in, in multi-mode or single mode. Um, and, and again, it's uh, the interlocking armor eliminates the need for any um, conduit or, or, or interduct um, for for mounting. So again, this can sit directly on um, J hooks on the wall, or you know, sit in the rafters on a cable tray, what have you. Another option um, for backbone fiber is your dielectric armored cable, um, which happens to be one of my um, preferred cables to use um, as it's more lightweight. Um, it is less cost. Um, the bend radius is, is extremely better, um, more than three times better than what your armored cable is. And again, no conduit is needed with it. Hangs on J hooks, undefined pathways. Um, there's no bounding or grounding required with it. And again, it comes in multiple fiber types and fiber counts. And that's just a quick snapshot at um, kind of what that picture looks like um, coming from the micro data center uh, or the enterprise level and, uh, and, and your different options for hanging this type of cable, right? So um, again, the interlocker, interlocking fiber can sit on the J hook or on the tape cable tray as well as the, the dielectric armor. Um, and then you've got the, at the bottom, the blue cable, which is more of your standard jacket, um, multi-conductor, um, fiber that will typically go into a, again, as that says, a snap snap together tray cable, or it'll go get pulled through conduit. Okay, Mark, we're going to go ahead and take our second poll question. I will give everyone a few moments to fill that out. Okay. Just bear with me a second. Everyone is still actively voting here. We'll give it a few more moments. Okay, Mark, it looks like the polling has completed. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hand the call back over to you. Okay. So I guess my next thing here, here we go. Um, we've got a lot of information out on our website um, for additional information. Um, if you're looking for more information on CPWE, there are white papers out there. Um, if you want to know more specifically about um, what Panduit offers in terms of cabling and connectivity, um, that's certainly available as well. Um, we've got some industry site links um, that are really helpful as well in terms of learning more about connectivity on the plant floor or at the enterprise level. So um, I, with that, I, I think I'm about here at the end. Okay, we can go ahead and take this time now to um, answer some questions. It looks like, um, Mark, we have one in the queue here. Okay. Who, 
who do I call if I need support in designing or deploying industrial networks? Okay, well, my first recommendation <clears throat> would be to locate who your local um, Panduit distributor is, and with their help, as well as um, our local sales teams deployed in those areas, you know, we can certainly answer any questions or, or visit and, and help you with whatever, you know, issues or questions you may have uh, with any specific applications on, on, on in, in your facility. Okay. Um, looks like another one just came through. Can you, it says, can you explain um, the application of loose tube distribution with tight buffer breakout fiber optic cable? Okay, so I've got, <clears throat> and I could talk quite a long time on that particular subject in a, a good 15, 20 minutes. So I've got, I've got some data that I would like to send out if that would be okay, that would, that would cover those, those topics. Yeah, we, I can give you a list of everyone's email and we can. That would be that. great. Okay. Um, one other question here. What types of M12 connectors are best suited for high vibration environments? Okay, I, I think I, I touched base on this briefly earlier, but for high vibration environments, depending on what industry you're in, again, you're, you've got your, your crimp style connectors, which are best suited for the highest of vibration environments. Could be high horsepower motors it's sitting on or mounted to. Um, it could be in a train, it could be on a bus. Those are the places that are you know constantly in movement and vibrating. Um, on the plant floor, generally speaking, your IDC connector, your insulation, uh, insulation displacement connector, um, what the IDC blades is generally well suited and, and typically doesn't see any problems in your typical um, automotive line or or conveyor line or uh, food and beverage line. It's usually suited for any of those very, very well. Okay. Um, looks like we had one more uh, pop up here. How do you bond, how do you, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you bond the industrial shielded modular jacks? So <clears throat> the industrial jacks, um, typically have a, a bonding point on them. Um, we've got both versions, one that's not bonded and the other that, that, that that's floating basically, but there is a, a tab to bond to on those. Same with the patch panels. Thank you everyone for your, your time today and for all the questions. We'll go ahead and conclude the webinar today. Thank you very much.